Hello dear programmers, how are you doing today? A very warm welcome to my channel and topic of this video is Pandas data frame. Let's first understand what is Pandas. Pandas is an open source PhD license library which provides easy to use data structures for data analysis in Python programming language. So Pandas is nothing but something consists of data structures using which we can do data analysis on large amount of data. So when we talk about Pandas data structure, there are two data structures provided by Pandas. They are data frame and series. In this particular video, we will talk about Pandas data frame. Before I go ahead and start talking about Pandas data frame, a note of caution guys, most of the time if you start learning Pandas from online resources or for that matter even via official documentation, it generally starts with series then it moves to data frame. However, I have worked with Pandas for very long time and I am convinced that it's the Pandas data frame that we should concentrate on and we should learn. Once we know about data frame, learning series is just a child's play. Okay, So let's start with a data frame. What is a data frame? Let's first start with a technical definition. A technical definition states that a data frame is nothing but a 2D labeled data structure with columns of potentially different type. I know this technical definition doesn't make much sense. So I have come up with a very simple explanation of what is a pandas data frame. Pandas data frame is nothing but just an Excel sheet. Yes, you heard it right. Pandas data frame is nothing but just an Excel sheet because it provides us with all the functionalities what we do for data analysis in an Excel sheet. Just like in an Excel sheet, we store some two dimensional data like this. Here I have a data for seven people with name, age and designation and I have created column as name, age and designation. I am keeping the record of seven people with the sequence in here. So a data frame is nothing but a programmatic representation of AWAP data in memory. We, you can ask a question that, okay, if it is similar to Excel sheet, why the hell I use Pandas data frame? Well, the question is very good, but the answer is also very simple. Pandas data frame is a in-memory data structure, which means that you can load lots and lots of data in memory and use various functionalities provided by Pandas to analyze, change and extract the valuable information from the data that is given. In that sense, Pandas data frame is extremely useful, widely used and very popular tool for extracting valuable information from your data, especially when the data comes in a tabular format or in a CSV file, if it has some kind of structure in it. Now, since we know that a Pandas data frame is nothing but this particular Excel representation in memory, let's try to see how we can create Pandas data frame with the same amount of data which I am depicting over here. So Pandas provide various APIs to read data from file including CSV files and in real cases most of the time when we are loading the data into Pandas data frame we would be loading it from some persistent storage. But for better understanding in this particular video we will stick to Python data structures like dictionary and list for the purpose of understanding only, okay? I'll create a separate video on how to read and create pandas data frame from CSV file or for that matter with other persistent storage including SQL files. Now let's go back and see this data. If I want to store this data in a Python data structure, what do you think will be the best Python data structure to store this particular data? I guess most of you have guessed it by now that it's a Python dictionary. So if we consider name, age and designation as keys and these as value, this particular data can be represented inside a Python dictionary. So let's go ahead and use my Jupyter notebook to see how we can create pandas data frame from that particular dictionary. So some logistic, I'll import pandas and numpy and I'm creating dictionary with key and value. Key is the column name and value is the value provided in this particular Excel sheet. It's the same value I have copied it over here. Now to create a data frame out of a dictionary, I'll call a function of pandas called data frame and pass my dictionary into it. And when I go ahead and see my dictionary, we can see a tabular structure, which is very similar to our Excel sheet over here. Okay, but you can see there is some difference over here because I have provided name first, then age, then designation. However, I am getting age first, then designation, 
than the name. This has nothing to do with pandas data frame. It is to do with dictionary because dictionaries is a hash and it doesn't guarantee to store data in the sequence provided. So if you go ahead and see the dictionary, you can see that in the dictionary itself, age comes first, designation comes next and name comes last. And that's the reason pandas data frame is showing age first. It doesn't manipulates or change the order of data. Data frame takes the data in the order it is provided to it. So I hope I was able to explain why age is coming first and name is coming last. So this is how my data frame looks like. Now in this particular data frame, you can see that I didn't provide this row index number 0 to 6. My dictionary doesn't have this row index number. So in this particular case, what data frame did is that it automatically generated a row index number from 0 to 6. It's just a number starting from 0. And of course, there are all the reasons for not liking this auto-generated number. In those cases, you can provide your own row index by passing a parameter called index over here in the data frame. So if I do that and then see my data frame, look, row index will be what I have provided in the index parameter. and it's not necessary to provide only integer values in index parameter. We can even provide the string values. For example, in here, you can see that my row indexes are the string which I have provided in over here. Now, if you are aware of NumPy, you can very well guess that the index parameter is a homogeneous array, which means we can provide a NumPy array over here. So here I have created a NumPy array and I'm providing the NumPy array as index and you can see that index contains whatever NumPy array I have created. Now Pandas data frame consists of columns and these columns are of homogeneous type. It's very similar to NumPy in that regard and it's unlike Python list and dictionaries which can be of heterogeneous type. A column will always be of homogeneous type. For example, age will always be a numerical type and name will always be a string type, so does designation, okay? Which means that when we load the data, there will be requirement for us to check the data type of a particular column because you can do certain operations only when you know the data type because if you add a string or add number, these two will result in different values, okay? So to check the data type of a particular column, there are various ways. One way is the using dictionary syntax. I can say data frame, pass the name of the column and I'll say dot D type. So it will tell me the data type of the column age. There is another way also I can directly say data frame dot column name dot type and it will result in the same output. Similarly, I can check for another column using data frame dot name dot data type. And you can see data type each object. Now, if you want to check the data type of all the columns at once, you can directly say data frame dot D types and you will see data type of all the columns in this particular data frame. Now we know how to create a pandas data frame. Let's see once I have the data frame, how can I see the individual data or individual rows of the particular data frame. So most often than not, pandas data frame will consist of hundreds if not thousands of rows at any point of time. So even if we see those thousands of rows at any point of time, we cannot make out anything. We want to get a gist of what is present in that particular data frame. To selectively view some rows, especially from top and from bottom, we can use head and tail function which by default gives top five rows or bottom five rows. For example, if I say df.head, you can see top five rows. If I say df.tail, it give me bottom five rows. We can also pass some argument in head and tail function, which will give me that much rows. If I pass two in head, it will give me top two rows. If I pass seven in head, it will give me top seven rows. If I pass seven in tail, it will give me bottom seven rows. Here we are seeing all the rows because we have just seven rows. And I have shown this example to tell you that the number is not limited to five. You can pass any number. Okay. Now this is about seeing the data. What about seeing the indexes and column? Well, pandas data frame provide functions called index and columns, which we can use to see the indexes of that particular data frame. 
as well as columns of that particular data frame. Now, most of the time when we want to analyze the pandas data frame, we most likely will analyze it column wise because each column will tell me something different about that particular data. For example, this designation column. Okay, so if I want to see what are the designations that are there in this particular data frame, I can just say data frame dot designation dot unique. So it will give me all the unique designations. So you can see that VP, CEO, CFO and MD is the unique designation that is present in this particular data frame. Similarly, if you want to see the mean age of all the persons in the company, I can just say data frame dot is dot mean and it will give me 30 as the mean age for out of all the seven people in this particular data frame. There are various other functions uh, column helper functions which we can use to extract some valuable information and pandas data frame official documentation has a list of all those functions these two are just the minimal set which i have shown here now when we are loading some data from sql or for that matter from csv file or for that matter from even the excel sheet there will be cases that the data already contains the row index number remember in here till now we are generating row index numbers what if the data already contains the row index number? In that case, we don't need to generate this row index number by the pandas data frame because it's just a waste of memory. Remember it, in most of the cases, we'll be having hundreds and thousands of data, okay? So even if you consider it as an integer, four byte integer, it's a huge amount of memory. So if we believe that our data already contains the row index, we can set the data frame to use that particular column as a row index. So let me go back and regenerate our old data frame with the same dictionary. So this was our old data frame with auto generated row index number. Let's say I want to say that name is my row index number. I can say set index as name. In this case, name become row index. I can do same thing for age. In this case, age become row index. Incidentally, I can also give combination of columns as row index. So in here, I can provide name, age, this combination as row index. Similar to getting the row index as part of the data, most of the time when we get data, we may need to clean up some data. And we come to a conclusion that most of the columns are not useful that is coming to me in the CSV file or in the Excel file. In those cases, I can actually load the selective amount of columns in my data frame. So in this particular case, I am loading the data frame from my dictionary which contains name, age and designation. But I am loading only name and age. So in this case, if I go ahead and see my data frame, you can see that only name and age is being loaded in this particular data frame. So till now, it's all about loading and seeing the data. What about if I want to delete some column or rows? So this is our next topic. To delete a rows and column, there are multiple ways to do it and I am not recommending any special way because there is no performance penalty of using one over another. Please feel free to use what you like. So let me go ahead and regenerate my old data frame, the original data frame with the dictionary mydict. If I want to delete a column, for example, I can use the dictionary syntax sign. I can say del data frame, the column name. And if I do that and see the data frame, you can see that my column name is deleted. But there are other better ways to do it by using data frame dot drop function. Let me go ahead and regenerate my original data frame. And now I can call drop function and pass the column name. Drop function takes two argument. It's the second argument that decide whether the column will be deleted or row will be deleted. If I pass one over here, it means a column name age will be deleted. If I pass zero over here, it means that the uh, row with matching row index will be deleted. So here I am deleting the column age and you can see that the column age is deleted. Now, if I want to delete the row, I can say data frame dot drop zero means row uh, with row index number three. In this particular case, row index number three is deleted. We can also delete multiple rows and columns. So to see that, let me go back and regenerate my original data frame. And in here, I am deleting a column because I am passing one in drop function and I am deleting name and age and I am passing more than one column as a list. So you can see that name and age is deleted. 
now if i want to drop multiple rows i'll pass zero as a second argument and i am passing a list with two three four which means that row index containing two three four will be deleted and you can see that row 234 are deleted now uh, just one clarification guy don't get confused that if i have dropped name and age why name and age is coming over here each of these function generates a new data frame i have to explicitly call in place to make sure that the data frame on which i am working is actually impacted here it generates me a new data frame which is being displayed over here now deleting column using column name is easy but most of the time it leads to some kind of problem because many times there are just spelling mistake caps issue and many more things so you can also delete column using the column index number so first column is zeroth index second column is first index and so on so let me go ahead and regenerate my data frame in this case i have provided index as first second third fourth fifth to differentiate it a bit better so let me go ahead and drop column number zero and one so i have called the drop function with second argument as one which means i want to delete column and i'm passing df dot columns and a list containing zero and one which means zeroth column and first column will be deleted and it's deleted over here. Now till now we have seen generation of data frame using dictionary and it maps nicely because key can be column name and values can be respective rows. But what if I don't have dictionary, I have just plain list. Can't I generate data frame from the list? Yes, you can and let's see how we can do that. So here is my 2D list. And if I generate my data frame using the list, you can see a data frame is generated. In case of dictionary, only the row index were generated automatically. In this particular case, columns are also generated automatically. And of course, the column name is something you will hate because this 0, 1, 2, 3 makes some sense in row index, but column, it doesn't make any sense. So while creating a data frame from a list, you can provide parameters called index for row index and columns for column names so if i do that let's see my data frame out of list which contains the column name provided over here and row indexes provided over here and when we are talking about a list or 2d list numpy arrays are awesome and they are equally welcome as input to pandas data frame and the end result will be same one of the biggest usp with all these data analytics tool is that they allow mathematical operation to happen at each and pandas data frame is no exception we can perform multiple mathematical operations on pandas data frame let's say here i am multiplying two data frame you can see that end result is multiplication of two data frame in here i can multiply with a scalar value each element of the data frame will be multiplied by a scalar value called 10. I am creating a new data frame over here just to show that uh, any operation generates a new data frame unless and until I in place parameter is being triggered. Okay. And here I am adding 100 to all the elements in data frame. Not only that, I can also do bitwise operation. So anything and with 0 is 0. So that's all about Pandas data frame, a basic usage of it. But before I close this session, let me talk about series. A series is nothing but a single column of a Pandas data frame. When you are working with Pandas and use more than one series, it becomes a data frame. So that's what a series is. When we are working with Pandas data frame, we are implicitly working with series. That's why I said in the beginning that we should work on Pandas data frame first learn it first then move to the series don't worry if series is still not clear i am creating my next video on the panda series okay so that's all about this particular video thanks a lot guys thanks for watching please take a moment to like share and subscribe thank you thanks a lot